Welcome to Black Man Lab. We are live. This is February 8th, Monday. We have a great, great topic tonight that we're going to be discussing. Um, the, we're going to be talking about the book, We Need You, uh, that has been written uh, by our founder, one of our co-founders um, of Black Man Lab, Maoli Davis. So we're going to talk about this important book that he wrote. Um, and then some of the projects that we have going around with the book as well. Before we get into all that good business, I want to introduce uh, who's going to be on the panel with me tonight, my brother Joe Barker. What's happening? What's happening? Good for uh, good to be here. Hey, you know, I'm excited to finally talk to uh, Molly, man, about, about this work that he's been doing. Uh, I've been... We've all known him for a long time. Um, I, I actually am probably the new kid on the block because you guys both have a much longer history than with him than me. But, you know, I've seen the work that he's done in the community and, and the advocacy, and I was just so excited to see him put that in, 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 in writing and talk about some of those experiences, especially, you know, the experience he had with Kobe and Kahari because, you know, we, we – most of us were there that day, man, and um, is 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 a lot. And so I'm excited, man. I'm excited to finally get the the, the founder, the creator of this on there, and also the man who put that uh, pen to pad and, and and made it happen for us. And and man, just being in the studio and some of the other things that he has going on is just uh, great to finally see it coming to fruition and be a part of it. So glad to glad to be here tonight. Appreciate you, Marty. Good stuff, Joe. And uh, also. I'm glad to have our other brother and board member on with us tonight, my brother, Jared Grant. Jared. What's going on, brothers? Uh, excited about this evening and um, I'm excited about this book. And our brother, um, Brother Davis, and congratulate him on a, a well-written book and a, um, one that our community really needs. So. Ashe. Ashe, absolutely. And um, a couple of housekeeping things that we do every week. Every week we uh, make sure that we are of right mind in this space, and we make sure that we are in a space that we are taking in the information that is given, and tonight we're going to have some really great information given. Um, so with that, what we do first and foremost is we get ourselves centered. And to do that, uh, I'm going to ask Brother Joe to uh, help us to get in that space. Joe? Absolutely, man. I appreciate that, Marty. You know, it's um, it's a it's a panel full of brothers that taught me how to get in this space, and I'd be remiss if I did not give that shout out to our brother Fred Palm, who uh, is always with us in spirit, but is so so deep in the community and with our our youth, getting that work done that he can't join us. But he's he's been one of my biggest inspirations in terms of centering myself and the meditation that I do and so forth. So, you know, this just comes from when we were all in space together. You know, we were at the locations, man. We would all get together and we'd, we'd reflect upon the weeks that we had. Some brothers had a little bit tougher time than some others. And so we would just show them love, man, and show them some, some gratitude and just be in space with them. Let us know whether you had a good week, bad week, and different. We're here for you. We're here with you. Let all the troubles fall off and just be in this space with whatever that topic was so that we can enjoy it and appreciate the knowledge and the wisdom that was coming from the brothers just permeating through the crowd. And so our way of doing that online is just to take a few deep breaths to start, to send ourselves, to just let, you know, whatever may have happened last week, whatever may have happened last year, just let it roll off our backs. It's just go ahead and send ourselves in this moment to hear the work that's being done by Attorney Davis and to really reflect on how we can be a part of that, how we have been a part of that, whether we're in the book or not, what we've all done to, to accompany him on this journey and how we can support him moving forward. So to best be in that moment, I would say let's, let's take a couple of deep breaths. Let's take a couple of deep breaths. I would say on the count of three, let's just breathe in. One, two, three. Hold it. Now let it out. Let it out, man. Let let that tension, let that stress come off of you. Let 
let those shoulders relax and get in the moment. You know, we're going to do that one more time. Just on the count of three, just take a very, very deep breath. Try and, try and hold it for a couple of seconds if you can this time. One, two, three. Hold that in. Hold that in. You know, work those lungs out and let it out. Let it out. And with that, we center our, ourselves. We're happy to be here. We're grateful for this work, and we're excited to hear about it. Awesome. Thanks so much, Joe. Appreciate that. It's real important that we are of right mind when we are taking on some great information. And with that, the other thing that's really important is that we always acknowledge those that came before us. Um, this book is is really what that's about. This book is talking about a lot uh, for Maoli and for a lot of us, those that were before us to get us the work that we're doing today and then how we look forward. Um, with that, I want to bring Brother Jared back on to uh, bring the ancestors into the space. Jared, if you could. All right, brothers, uh, let's, uh, let's center ourselves, continue to center ourselves. And I want you to put in your heart and mind um, many of those great ancestors. You know, we, we've had ancestors that built the pyramids, and um, I'll show you, and we've had ancestors that have, um, uh, that have built many civilizations throughout the continent of Africa that survived the Middle Passage. We've had ancestors, uh, individual ancestors that have done some great things. So let's just think about them and put them in our hearts and minds for a minute. On the count of three, let's raise our fists. And on the count of three, I say Ashe. One, two, three. Ashe. Ashe. And then we also have ancestors, individual ancestors. Let's bring in our individual ancestors. So it's 10,000 ancestors that it took to create you, you as an individual. And uh, those 10,000 ancestors that took to create Maoli, um, who would bring about this book from his, from his soul. So let's think about them for just a few seconds. All right, and everybody raise your fist and say I shake three times on three. One, two, three. I shake. I shake. I shake. All right. Thank you, brothers. Thank you so much. It's uh it's needed every week for us to be in this right frame of mind. It's needed for us to make sure that we have the spirit of our ancestors in the space as well. With that, let's bring on the man of the hour, my brother. Um, Maoli Davis, who I have to tell you, I read this book in about maybe two hours at most. Very easy read, but it's also a very intense read. And it, when I say intense, I mean that the messaging, um, uh, uh, the visualization of it, it's all written in a way that makes you not want to put it down. Um, so with that, I want to bring on Maoli. Um, and, and Molly, the first thing I would like you to do, brother, is just tell us where the book comes from. What what was your motivation for writing this book, um, and 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 how it came about for you? Let me start with uh, thanking you, brothers, for the work, the work that we do collectively, and the friendship and the brotherhood. And I'd like to just start, if I could, with um, a passage from the book that helps frame the, the reason that we named it, um, We Need You. The booth became a confessional full of admitted sins, forgiveness, and answered prayers. In the midst of his ramblings about how and why he could he could do better, I heard myself mumble, brother, we need you. I said it without thinking. Speaking into the phone, it was as if I were whispering into my brother Nate's ear. Brother, we need you. However, I wasn't speaking to Nate. I was in a jail booth 
speaking to a newfound brother, not just a client. He suddenly stopped talking and he looked surprised, but not confused. He raised his head and we looked into each other's eyes in a way that two black men would never do if we were walking down the street. We didn't look away, we didn't flinch. And then I repeated with more confidence and clarity, brother, we need you. He began crying more intensely and between sobs, he whispered, I know. Perhaps that day was that someday I never had with Nate. That someday was with this stranger who had become a brother. This brother joined me in warming this cold jail booth with the intensity of our shared pain and the warmth of our tears. So that really was a spiritual moment for me when I really had just began practicing criminal defense law and I was in the Clayton County Jail. And Marty, you know, um, and, and some of you all know that I lost my brother, one of my brothers, my oldest brother, Nate Allen, a few years ago. And he struggled most of his life, adult life with a drug and alcohol addiction. Very brilliant. Went to Purdue on an electrical engineering scholarship. Um, just, just a bright, bright guy, but had demons. And those demons had him, you know, try to chase him away with with, with drugs and alcohol. And as I was in that jail, um, as a young criminal defense attorney, I went there just hoping I could help somebody and I got moved, you know, um, as they say in certain dance circles, I got struck, you know, and, um, and, and I just felt though that me telling him that we needed him, you know, because I don't know that that black men are told that very often <clears throat> or enough that that we we need you. Most often we're told that we're disposable, we're criminal, <clears throat> um, we're easily replaced, and we're not wanted. But spirit moved me that that day to um to say that and i think since then i have tried as best i could to continue saying and showing black men women children as much as i could that we need them because i believe that that the situation that we are in as black folk require us to collectively work together and that we need each other in ways now that we've always historically needed each other. And, and the, the Eurocentric thinking of, of, of American pop culture, mainstream culture says that we're these rugged individuals and we don't need nobody. But our spirit, our cultural spirit just keeps urging us to come together, to work together, to build together because that's the only way we, we survive um, what, we're, what we're experiencing and what our children are experiencing. And not just in the United States, but around the world, African people everywhere are needed and that we need each other. So that's, that's, that's how yeah. um, we framed it. Yeah, and, and um, you know, in, in that same spirit, Molly, um, when you, when you talk about um, the need of us as a community um, and, and how that gets appropriated so often, especially as it relates to us as black men, um, the realization that we as a black people are the most important commodity to um, a capitalistic society as well as the rest of the world um, is getting more and more um, magnified and, and we see when we do come together, uh, with, with 
same mindset you talked about, the results are immediate and they're powerful. And we're going to get to that too, because this project that we have going with this book speaks. Um, but let, let me, before we go any further, um, when you actually, and, and, and folks, I want you to know, Molly wasn't typing this on a, on a, on a uh, computer. This was literally pen to paper. This was literally him writing pen to paper, old school style. Oh, um, yeah. It was a, it was a, it was a mix. I was at times on notes, you know, I'm on notes, just yeah. trying to get it. And it started, you know, Jared and, and brother Melick and Dana, when we started black man lab, you know, the whole idea was get the, get the young brothers together before they go away to college and put, as my grandmama would say, put some fat on their head, you know, don't let's just, you know, you, you, you wonder if you have done enough for your children, you know, to prepare them to go away to college. Cause we know sure. how college can get, uh, they can get, folk can get kind of crazy. So we'd like, well, man, let's just do this crash course and try to give it all to them before they, before they hit these campuses. And so we gathered them up and started black man lab over at the firm. Then we had sessions at Upson with Mel Burroughs and we had sex sessions at Sankofa. And we said we needed a book that, you know, wasn't enough, right? Black Man Lab, you bring the young people, then you invite in people who are high up in the profession, but also socially conscious. So we had Killer Mike come through. We had uh, Rick Ross from Capitol Records and in areas that they were they rocking with. So we bring in people who undoubtedly successful, but also socially conscious. But the piece that we felt was missing was that there needed to be some book that centered them, something that, that we could collectively read. And Jared, you remember that first book was uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates, his, his first book, The Beautiful Struggle, mm -hmm. uh, which, which paints this beautiful picture of Howard um, really shortly after Marty and I, Marty went there and I, um, frequented. <laughs> he, he, he kind of went there too. <laughs> I did everything but take classes there. Um, that's two of us. All right. <laughs> right, right. And you do. I know your mom would say he didn't take classes either. That's right. Uh, or didn't go to class. He took classes. But, um, but the idea was, um, something we could read and discuss together that talked about, you know, coming into manhood. We lost you, Molly. Mm -mm. Lost uh -oh. your sound, bro. No sound? Oh, there you go. You're good. Yeah, you hear you now. You're back. back. Okay. Uh-oh, it says my... My internet connection is unstable. It's unstable. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> I hate it when I see that. God. You're okay now, though, Flo. Go ahead, buddy. So, um, so it, it was it was for, you know, so on the flight to take Kobe, our oldest, to Howard, I was just thinking, man, because you know when you're taking your kid away, your first one, you just have all of these thoughts about, all right, let me write that, you know, you – you know that letter, right? I know all of us have written him that letter here. Mm -hmm. Take this, read this when you, you know, open this envelope after I leave kind of thing. And so on, on the flight, I started writing down um, what became the outline for the book. And that was over four years ago. So it's not a very, it's not a very long book. It's, it's uh, you know, but it took four years to write because I've all, I was also kind of living and learning the experiences as well. So, but I think as, as we know about the most high and the, and the ancestors and the universe, that it's right on time for, for me and for hopefully for the community, mm -hmm. but it took four years to actually pull it together. And, um, yeah. and so, you know, it's an offering. And that's, that's all it is. It's not definitive. It's an offering and hopefully an invitation. That's what I really wanted to be was an invitation for young people to find their way and, and really reimagine how they could 
be a part of the movement, you know, um, and not the most beautiful thing that, that happened to me was the people that I've met on my organizing journey and meeting people who were not dogmatic, people who were um, understood that, that your, your mom and them still practice Thanksgiving and that you need to be with your people when they gather and not, you know, be like, hey, because I don't, I don't believe in all of that, I'm not gonna be over there and miss opportunities to be with family. So I just have had the blessing of, you know, people like Conrad Worrell, um, Andy Thompson, and Jerry Afghani, um, just real practical, mm -hmm. like, loving people. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then I can get a little Moja. His family has been, my godfather here has been tremendous in just seeing you know, kind of operationalizing your consciousness while being a revolutionary and being in a family, you know? So you gotta stop, stop me, man. I'm a, I'm a bad guest, bro. I'm a well, bad well, guest. Well, this is, this is the one time that we're not gonna stop you tonight. Right. Because, because this is all about um, the We Need You book. And, 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 you know, we know the work that you've done put it together i personally have watched um you know you as you've gone down this journey in, in writing the book um how it's how it's evolved as well because i think from where you you were originally going in the it with the book to where you got to now um to the finished product are two different things um i will say to your point the book is you know relatively short but the points in the book are great and and it's uh it's a really easy, good read that I think our young people, as we've seen, um, that have had it, have become really engaged with it. Um, to that point, what would you say, Molly, was the point in the book um, where you were 100% sure on the direction that you were going with it? Because I, like I said, I know you, you, you fluctuated a little bit, um, but what, what, what was it that made it click for you? The, the hard part is that there's so much to say, you know, in mm -hmm. terms of yeah. there's there's so much to that you want to say to your children. You know, I I envision putting something together that my sons and their boys, you know, it's like really is what I've been trying to live since since they were born in terms of doing this organizing work. And, and loving and fighting for black people. And so I've been in that space, moving, 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 and constantly trying to pull them up and say, hey man, the reason we're doing this is this and da, 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 da. And so I tried to encapsulate, you know, 20 something years that they witnessed into a, into a book. And so it was hard, you know, to say, okay, what lessons are fundamental lessons that they need to consider. And, and, I, and I'm trying as best I can not to be dogmatic. The only thing that I'm trying to say without question is that we need you. Mm -hmm. Everything else, take it, chew on it. You know, it may not resonate with you in this moment. Maybe life will tell you something different. Mm -hmm. But right now, trying to get everyone to just feel the, the, with all that I have and know is that I know for us to survive, for us to thrive and build a new world, it's the young people. It's yes. this next generation that have to be a part of it and leading it and ground it. And so, the, the, and I'll say the three truths that, that I think we try to weave throughout is that one, as African, we are an African people mm. and that our history and culture is the foundation for our power and clarity. And Amos Wilson talks about it, is that if you're culturally and historically confused, you are weak. You're just weak. 
and it's in a, you can see it in human beings. If somebody has amnesia, you can tell them anything because they've mm -hmm. lost their their knowledge and understanding about who they are. And you can just direct them. You can say, "Hey, your name is a B, and you a pimp, and your name is the you know the H." or however y'all spell it, D-A-W-H, whatever, but <laughs> you, know, um, you know what I'm saying? You you just sure. without that historical, cultural clarity, mm -hmm. you, you, you're you susceptible to, to anything. So that's one truth. The other truth is that we have always resisted, that there has been a black resistance movement since the first African landed on these shores and that the idea that we've ever been docile that we have ever just been submissive to this oppression is for the benefit of those that would want to continue to oppress us mm -hmm. and so i want young people to know that we that rebellious spirit that they feel comes out of a culture of resistance to oppression and that it never stopped you know like for me I would think for a period of time when I was, you know, younger and, you know, maybe first going into college, like, man, what happened? You know, why did we stop fighting in the 60s? But we didn't. We right. never stopped. We, right. we, we had warriors in the 70s, warriors in the 80s, warriors in the 90s. You know, there have always been our people who have been organized. And then the final third truth that I that I hope is is clear is that white supremacy is a clear and present danger that must be first acknowledged, challenged, and ultimately defeated. The system of white supremacy has to be dismantled in order for black lives to truly matter. And for us Say to that. do anything else is really to, to, to send our children out um, in a very naive way, right? Because if you don't understand white supremacy, Neely Fuller talked about it, if you don't understand white supremacy, everything else you think you know will only confuse you. And that's what we, that's what we have happening where people <laughs> don't understand, well, why is this? Why? It's white supremacy. It's white supremacy, you know, because if not, you'll start doubting yourself. You say, dang, why didn't I get this opportunity? I've worked my butt off. And you'll start questioning, you know, whether you have what it takes. And mm -hmm. you do have what it takes. You're enough. But this system says it's ingrained to say that you are less than. And so we've got to defeat it in order for our children to live their full human potential. It's, mm -hmm. it's a crippling system. It not only cripples black folk, it cripples white people because it has them thinking um, that they are more than. And right. so when we're trying to provide leadership, they don't want to hear it. We got mm -hmm. folk on their job, right? We got black people who have gone through academia to the best predominantly white institutions, PWI, some have gone to the best HBCUs, and then they get in a position, they're in a meeting, and they are speaking their truth about what's happening in the workspace. And folk look at them, turn to the next person, what do you think? The <laughs> white person says the exact same thing. And then they go, oh, that sounds like a great idea. Because so often we're just dismissed and not heard in ways that, uh, again, it the, the cost of white supremacy and racism is is more than the world can continue to bear, and that's the real. And so it's it's got to get dealt with, and the, that's why uh, white people who want to see the world survive got to get down. And, and become allies and, and really do this, do this work because this is unsustainable. Mm. When you think about it, and I'll be quiet after this, the last, when we think about the last African um, 
civilization. You know, we have these different golden ages. We had Kemet, Nubia, um, multiple golden age, ages, thousands of years ago. Then, then when you get to Songhai, and, and that, you know, when you get to the Moors, and, but when you get to Songhai, like at 1492, you have kind of not only the so-called founding of, of the Americas by Christopher Columbus, but you have the fall of Songhai, which was, is a significant historical moment. So European dominance of the world really has only been from about, you know, 14, 1500s, right? Because they were in a dark age. European European societies were in a dark age and it took the Moors to bring light. And so about 500 years. So we had all of these thousands of years of African civilizations doing phenomenal things, being able to repair cataracts, being able to um, build pyramids, not just in Kemet, but all over, right? Kemet being Egypt for 500 years. And right now we are at the brink with all of the technology. The, the world is in deep, deep trouble because of the way that it has been run. And so we've got we've to gotta just recognize that, that, that there needs to be a new set of cultural values that drive the way the world works. And what I've humbly submitted is that that should be an indigenous, African, native people's perspective and culture that emphasizes communalism, that emphasizes interdependence, that emphasizes um, the respect of human beings and of nature and not the exploitation of, of the world's resources. That's, you know, so it's hard to, you know, so that's what we try to do. Marty, let, let, me, let me ask a couple things. I, I, wanna, I wanna jump in on a couple of things. One, I wanna go, comment, go and then I have a, a, a question for you. Number, number one, your, your third truth. And I just, I just can't help but as a, as a Christian, as a Catholic, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably one of very few black Catholics most people know. Um, and I work in education. And last year I was working in an area and uh, I posted on one of my social medias a book. And I can't remember who it was by, but it was the, um, the sin, um, the, the history of Christianity, the sin of white supremacy. Mm. And basically, it explained to Christian readers how when Christians came to America, you know, they basically considered everyone heathens except them, and that, you know, you had to be Christian and you had to be this and that. But the underlying premise was white supremacy. It was that we're better because of, and you need to do this. So I, I, I got a lot of respect for your third truth because I posted that. And I was an independent contractor working to open a school for, for those communities most in need. And the chairman, and I'm not going to say names because we, we still, you know, uh, we're still in space. But the chairman, uh, an, an older Italian man, called me and very cautiously and, and carefully asked me to please take the post down because I was the face of the school. And even though it was on my personal social media, it was sending the wrong message. Mm -hmm. And uh, me to say, I, I didn't last there. Uh, <laughs> I didn't last there. So, you know, that, that, that acknowledging, that third truth, Mawali, is a big deal, brother, um, in every space. So I, I, I love that you bring that up and we discuss this in this space. I want to go back to that second truth. The second truth where we, we've never stopped fighting. And... You know, I've been rocking with you for a minute, but it was when we went to a, uh, a, a protest um, on the Fulton County Detention Center uh, with respect to the conditions in which inmates were being held. And that was the first time my baby boy, Justin, came with us. And, 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 and it, was, it, was, it was all night. Um, Brother Raphael Warnock 
had had a part in it. He said his piece. You know, you led the whole thing as you normally do. And he was Justin was fourteen at the time, and has just ever since really really understood now what we do and why we do what we do, you know? And he understood that just because he wasn't in the fight, like you said, we never stopped fighting. But last year, last year, I know Kobe and Kahari have been rocking with you forever, been in that space with you forever. You've been writing this book. I, yeah, I, I didn't even know. Three, four years into it, didn't know that. Tell me, man. Tell me about that night. And don't tell me too much because it's in the book and they got to buy the book. But I want you to just unpack a little bit about that evening, what was triggered or was anything triggered? Were you already en route to do all that you've been doing? But what did that night mean to you at the CNN Center here in Atlanta? Yeah, it's a different – so so that reference, Joe, man, it's, it's crazy because – I think I'm prepared and I think many of us are prepared and have been prepared to risk our lives for the movement, right? We, you know, people were like, well, you know, you going here and speaking here and doing that kind of thing. And, and so there are some risks to that, especially when we see what happened on January 6th at the Capitol, that they are clearly well-armed, well-financed, well-coordinated, um, yeah. tip of the spear, white supremacist. I'm not, you know, I'm not, again, yeah. it, it's just different variations. So just like the gentleman who, who pulled you up, he's protecting because see white supremacy functions within the educational. Yes. It, it functions throughout as, as Neely Fuller talks about in the every area of people activities, every area of people activities, whether it's in, media, the military, politics, education, you name it, it's there embedded. It's the, it's the air, you know, it's the water that right. fish swim in, it's the air that we breathe. It's just all around us as a part of what we are experiencing. And so we are ready. And I think some of us have made certain peace with, yeah. you know, I'm going to do what I do. I want to be here and a part of this work and, and with my family for as long as possible. I want to be a great, great, great granddaddy. But we've got some reality that that, you know, could or could not happen depending on who you run up against and who, who comes for you. But when your children yes. get out in the street and you know the danger of it and they're not just accompanying you as kind of you know tangential they are like out there in Part spaces of. that you would typically be you're right. like whoa 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 wait a minute right wait a minute there's a danger here that i don't know that my 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 21 at the time 20 and 22 year old can process as i saw the may 29th what was happening on television you know, there were other folks who called that um, that march, right, in Atlanta, down in Centennial Olympic Park. Mm -hmm. There are people that I've organized with for years. They called it. I wasn't a part of it. And I was actually on a panel discussion, a Zoom panel discussion, just talking about policing in America. And so Kahari says he's go going down to the protest. I'm like, cool, I'm gonna do this. I know the people that are organizing it, you know, they're gonna do what they do. And so they were they were rolling it. Um, once I saw the, it's been my experience that when you gather a huge number of people around something for eight minutes and 46 seconds, you see this, 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 um, individual, I had a lot of things. No, I had a lot of names go through my head, brother. <laughs> you go <laughs> through a lot of things just yeah, now, bro. I, to, I try to protect the black man, lab brand, brother. Just <laughs> criminal, that criminal, that criminal, oh, that criminal, that criminal, that criminal, that criminal. <clears throat> had his knee on his brother's neck as people begged him, 
You, I mean, we got to we got to process that. Yeah. People with his hands in his pocket. It was so nonchalant the way he could just. That's the what I'm saying. You know, like his life wasn't did not matter at all. But to have that energy, because we got to respond to that. Because we warriors by nature, and mm -hmm. to know you almost. They would have had to march that group of people through the streets of Atlanta almost all night in order for their energy to wear down yeah. to the point that they don't just tear it up. And it just, you know, ultimately, um, when that when that first organized effort ended, yeah, the people were still gathered, the energy was still there and the police were there. And that created a very um, combustible situation. Yeah. And when I saw it on television and I couldn't get Kahari, I'm just like I'm on now, I'm texting, you know, trying to get to him. Um, he's not responding. So I had to jump off of that <laughs> call, um, jump with Jaina and go and try to find him. And, um, I'll, I'll 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 read a little part of that because um, yeah, please do. Yeah, just the end the ending part of it because I think it um, it kind of captures what what was you know how it went down because to some degree it's a little um, I mean it is what it is. So I'll I'll just read read that section real quick. Um, So, well, I set up. Okay, you good? You got it? Yeah, I got you it. You got him out? Yeah. Go ahead, okay, buddy. go ahead. Go ahead. Friday night's uprisings were not something I could observe and critique while watching live coverage with color commentary provided by news reporters from various political and cultural perspectives. I had a different vantage point, which is what led me back to the streets on Saturday. Friday night, I was participating in a virtual panel discussion on police brutality. Come on and say hello, man. We on Black Man Live. Come on, let me see. So here is here's Cole ducking in. My nephew. So he he's he's uh studying is law school. So let me pick it back up. Um, Friday night, I was participating in a virtual panel discussion on pol police brutality in the wake of the video of George Floyd's murder. Prior to the start of the panel discussion, I was watching some social media feeds from people participating in the protest evolving in Atlanta in Centennial Olympic Park area. Our 20 year old son Kahari told us he was going to the park to be part of the protest. Despite being in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, I didn't discourage him because I was proud that he felt compelled to be involved in the movement without our prompting. We had taken Kahari and his older brother Kobe to protests and social justice gatherings since they were born. When Kahari was two or three years old, we attended an outdoor performance at the Midtown Music Festival of Public Enemy. As Kahari sat on my shoulders towards the back of the massive crowd, he joined Chuck D and the crowd of thousands when they began chanting F Bush, F Bush, but he didn't, they weren't saying F Bush, they were saying the full word in reference to George Bush who had waged a war against a sovereign nation in search of weapons of mass destruction, which did not exist. It was these kinds of experience that clearly shaped Kahari's personal militancy. To stop him from participating would have been akin to a betrayal of everything we taught him. Then I'm just gonna skip to when I finally caught up with Kahari. So just keep in mind, it's a, the massive crowd on the 29th I go yep. up on the CNN Center building in the parking deck, and then I see police cars set on fire. 
fit, stuff just going crazy. So then I go down in the crowd and I'm searching for them, you know, with this bike that I had to ride in because, you know, traffic stopped. He's not answering any texts. So I'm just trying to paint the picture, brothers and sisters who are, who are watching. Um, and then I finally, I saw him. As I saw him, he turned towards me and saw me. He was excited and almost jubilant. He must have seen the fear and relief in my eyes when he yelled, we went in dad, this is history. I wanted to share his excitement, but I knew we were all in danger. Yeah. As some protesters threw water bottles at the police, the danger was literally growing by the second. Tear gas, rubber bullets, and batons were soon to follow. I am disappointed that the only response I could muster was, okay, it's time to go. Kahari was undeterred by my lack of enthusiasm. He responded, pointing to the burned out police car and smashed windows at the CNN center. This had to happen. We needed this. Knowing he was right, I could only place my hand on his shoulder and said, please, son, we have to go. We have to go home now. He didn't speak. He just went back to his friends and gave them that. He walked back towards me. Attempting to console him, I said, you were here. You were a part of it. They heard y'all. They heard us. Mm. That was uh, getting him to the crib and him being my son and and knowing that um, what ultimately did happen. They fired on folks. We have yeah. a lot of, uh, we ended up with different cases from that night where people yeah. were hurt and arrested. You know, you know what I, I love so much about that, Maoli, is is you know you're you're used to being the one that's, that's leading those right and kobe and kahari are, are following dad and they're trying to understand what mom and dad are up to and taking notes so that they can take charge and what i love about that is the role reversal it's it's the strength of of kobe and kahari the strength of their leading and the vulnerability that you showed as a father that you were like but I know, I know some things you don't know still. Mm -hmm. So learn from this as well. But like you said, but you were here. Yeah. That's yeah, powerful, we, man. It, it, it was, uh, it was pensive to say the least. Um, when, when, you know, Molly calls like, Harry's there. And I was like, whoa, okay. I'm on my way. And then I was really like, whoa, okay, <laughs> this is uh, getting intense. But, um, you know, we stayed, we talked through. And I know, Molly, um, the level of emotion that you had from that moment, both from, you know, trying to find Kahari, but then once you did, the level of relief as well as, um, I'm sure, a sense of pride that you felt um, because this was all him. Like you said, this was, this wasn't, this wasn't because you're doing it that he had to do it. Right. And, right. and that's, that is the underlying message of what we need from our young people. Right. We need them to do that. We need them to take that lead um, because, you know, quite honestly, hey, I'll, I'll speak for us on this group. We're, we're at the halfway point at the very least, you know, so, um, yeah, you know, so and it's, go ahead. What are you going to say? I, I, I just say that when, when you, Kahari and I argued, right? Like literally we got in the car, we argued all the way home. Yep. We got home, we argued. I mean, he called me stuff. I was like, man, as hard as I've gone. You know, he was like, 
he was like, you scared? He was going hard, you know? Yeah. And, 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 you know, man, it's, it's the, it's difficult. You know, folks can, from their couches, you know, encourage young people to be reckless, but it ain't your son. Mm -hmm. Right. You're not, you not, you know, you encourage other young people. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, I'm all about strategy and 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 doing what what needs to be done to forward our, our movement, but we just can't allow our children to be thrown to the wolves. You know, yeah. what 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 the system has demonstrated its capacity to do without a blink of an eye. Is take black lives, young, beautiful right. black lives, and so I think yeah. we have a responsibility to get in between that and say, "Well, wait a minute, are we thinking this thing through?" You know, and uh, so that's what we're dealing with. Any any uh, any questions on um, Facebook? Any, any Let's take a look over there. Facebook? Normally we have some. Yeah, they're they, they blowing up. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, I, I'd like to say something real quick. Um, you know, a, a part of that, Molly, when we started the organization, too, and what we have to also realize, and as I listen to your uh, point about with your, with your son and, of course, our sons, is that they're actually natives to consciousness. You know, they, 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 have, they have a native language, so for them, it's not a big deal um, about what they know. And sometimes they surprise us mm -hmm. on what they actually know because they, they, were, they were raised on this. And so they have a totally different energy, whereas we had to go get it. We, had, we were seeking it, and we had to go get it. But they got it from us by being born unto us. And so, um, I, I, and I think one of the, the key things for that consciousness is that you, you imparted truth um, to your boys, you know, in an era of deception, in an era, you know, we live in the age of deception. And I think it just hit a point, you know, we put, putting a spotlight on police brutality, putting a spotlight on uh, racism. Um, what happened last summer here from here went all the way around the world and had an impact Absolutely. on everybody in the world. And, and, and that speaks to the light that we're bringing. That goes back to what you were saying, Joe. Uh, you know, I won't get deep with it about Catholicism. <laughs> but, you know, the original piece is the first 300 years, it was an African religion. Christianity yeah. was African for 300 years. Yeah. It got changed as a result of uh, um, as a result of uh, white supremacy, and so um, our, our work. And I wanted to show this real quick from the book. The photo is of the first true jump off. Although Maoli was doing protests beforehand, really, you know. We couldn't draw flies to those protests, you know, it was 15 <laughs> folks at those things, maybe 30, you know. Um, but this was 5,000. You know, this is with Trayvon. This is where a young 16 year old who would have been, I think, 25 this past week, mm -hmm. you know, Trayvon would have been like 25 years old or something. Um, and that's who you were trying to save as well through your son to make sure nothing occurred. But in this picture, this was the jump off to begin a wildfire or a protest cycle um, where we've been in the streets um, since 2013 with rallies, vigils, um, and organizing the youth and providing them with strategy and imparting wisdom because the previous generation I don't think really passed the torch, they wanted to keep it. But now we care about passing whatever we have unto them so that they can use it wisely. So as people um, look at your book, I want them to also, um, you know, to, to, to look at the type of picture and the type of truth and justice that you are also fighting for. And that, that, that picture you all is, is courtesy of Professor Jared Grant. Uh, 
He's got all, this brother has an incredible catalog of photographs from Atlanta protests. And it, it, it really, um, in fact, somebody got on, on me yesterday, my boy D Rice, he was like, man, I helped organize that daggone march and I ain't in the picture. <laughs> and he, in, this, in this picture though, is a very interesting group of folks. You see Sandra Scott, state representative. You see Charles Steele. You see Joe Beasley. You see Lil Scrappy. And you see my boy Zaid Malik, uh, one, of our, um, one of our new African brothers who who've been, grew up in the movement. His parents are, you know, very much mentors to me um, out of Malcolm X grassroots movement. Um, brother with his back doing security here. Um, that's one of, uh, that's Quojo. He's in New York now uh, teaching, you know, so it's, it's a, it's a. Well, my it, only, look here. Over here, back <laughs> my people is my daughter and my son. So, you know, who remember that day, you know, and yeah. she was only five or six years old. So it impacted her as well. So, yeah. Hey yeah. brothers, we do, we do have um, a, a question over from Facebook. So I want to, I want to engage in that. And, and, and Molly, I think it's perfect because it kind of segues into what Marty mentioned a little bit earlier into some of the projects. But the question is, can you explain how the We Need You project is helping steer and channel the young people's energy where they have some directed places to place their bottled up anger. I, it doesn't get a better segue than that, brother. Yeah, who asked that one? I like that. <laughs> Ola, 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 Ola. Oh, my sister. <laughs> my sister's in here, Sister Ola Ramey, man. That's, that's my Philly sis. You know, we, we uh, came together and really kind of came into consciousness um, and did the work together in Philly. When she was at Temple University working as a, um, a RA at Peabody Hall. And we used to have some real sessions at Peabody Hall, man. It was like, like she turned the hall into some kind of cultural, you know, um, just beautiful space where folks was coming through. But anyway, the, the, the We Need You, Young Creators, Innovators and Entrepreneurs is a project where we use the book to center and then encourage young people to collaborate and create. And so right now we have 81 young people. I got one of them in here now. Taylor's working with me. Taylor Bradbury's a, um, sister's getting ready to graduate from Syracuse University in May. And she's been, you know, in the middle of, of doing a lot of the creative work around um, website design and stuff like that. And so we have young people who are artists, like musical artists, vocalists. We have young people who are spoken word artists, visual artists, fashion. And what we just really asked them to do was read the book. And then each team has a different chapter that they were asked to create out of. And the whole vision is for them to, for them to create something that drew their peers into reimagining their role in movement work. And, and our ultimate objective is to help encourage our young people to be lifelong uh, community workers. And what I mean by that is it that you can be a lawyer, a doctor, a engineer, a artist, a business person, and you can an educator, uh, a tech person, and you can be a lifelong community worker working in the interest of black people. And I see that with Mark Lawson. Mark is a tech guy who is working with the young people. We have um, Victoria, Vicki Joe Washington, who's a teacher and visual artist, who's working with our visual art artist, Kimmy Bennings, who's a spoken word artist. She gets these young people together every Sunday and they just go crazy with their writing and the stuff that our young people have in them, we've got to create spaces mm -hmm. 
for them to be able to get it out, for them to be able to inform us, for them to be able to inspire us. I mean, I'm so inspired by these kids. So then we're at the studio on Saturday and they're in there collaborating and creating songs. And um, it gets me emotional when I think about it because like to know that they have so much in them and so much of this system creates an impediment for them to get it out. Right. And so we have to create safe and liberated spaces that allow them to to do them, you know, that 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 allow yeah. them to do their thing. And Ult it's, ultimately it's, allows them to I was gonna say Molly, ultimately ultimately allowing them to think freely without the constraints of what we talked about earlier, what white supremacy in the background, because it's not just the overt oppression of white supremacy. It's also our young folks wind up getting caught up thinking in that same white supremacist mindset, right? right that I'm not right. good enough, that, you know, all, all these negative things and then don't realize their own greatness. And, and, and I'm sorry I had to jump in here just because I was with you at the studio. And when you see, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. When you yeah. see what we have, it's yeah. amazing. And, and yeah. these young folks, that if you allow them to, that's so deep within them, their creativity is amazing. And I, I, um, it blows me away, man. When I listen to some of the songs that they've created, mm -hmm. just watching them do what they do, mm -hmm. um, and and so you know we're, I, I'm I'm on the board of Key Lumbo, uh, and by the way, I want want everyone to know that we, in addition to the book, um, my sisters Io and uh, Tashia, with the help of Brother Chinua created a study guide. So the study guide is on my website, but it's, it's about to be up on the Black Man Lab website where you, you know, we, this is, you know, we want people to engage the text and think about and talk about it. And so they created the study guide and, you know, to see the young people go through the study guide and, and, you know, really engage and talk about how they were feeling. We did one, uh, you know, a similar session like this with about 40 young people um, on Saturday and then another 40 on Sunday. And it was, it's just crazy to hear their thinking and what they see and how they see things. And um, brother, brother wrote a line, um, Brother uh, Awesome, Awesome David is his name, one of, our, one of our fellows. He says, black skin, black core. Like, you know, it ain't just mm -hmm. outside, black to the core, um, just cold. Talked about being dipped in black gold. I mean, they, they just had some crazy, beautiful yeah. stuff. And, um, and so that project, man, we, we want to get it to Dallas. We want to get it to Chicago. We want to move it all around the country. We want to take it through the summer. We want our young people who are involved now to work with the younger students. You know, it's just so many different levels. Um, and, and what I was what I was leading in, and I'll be quiet so we can take another question, is that I'm on the board of a of a African center school here, Kilumbo, which Mama Aminata um, um, Umoja founded. And it's just a beautiful space. But Quilombo is spaces, and we've had Quilombos where we free space. We fight, we organize to get space, and then we're able to be our authentic selves. And whether it was in Brazil, whether it was in Jamaica, whether it was in Haiti, they they key lumbo the whole island in Haiti, bro. 
They just was like, we're going <laughs> to, we'll just get the whole island and we straight. We don't have to just go here. Uh, whether it was with the Seminoles in Florida, Gullah Geechee in Georgia, there always been these key lumbos, these spaces where African people created space for us to be our natural selves. That's the beauty of Black Man Lab. When we talk about having safe and sacred space, that's all the quilombo was. That it was, what was safe and sacred? Black life. Black life was safe and sacred. All around us, they may come for us, they may denigrate us and our women, but in this space that we create, that we liberate, that we are able to control and have our children in is has to be safe and sacred and that's what we've tried to create for the young people with this project and that's why it's important that we you know we run this everywhere we can everywhere there um you know authentic african adults that are mm-hmm. moving with integrity we welcome them to join the work and spread it. say yes. let's go let's build let's do some build some more quilombos yeah and and i think that um just from what we've seen with with the pilot project, the uh, opportunity of of growth with this um, project beyond just the book. I mean, when you think about um, being able to get our young folks in spaces where they can just let it go, it's safe, as we always say, safe and sacred the spaces. But when they're able to just let it go and, and let their creativity and innovation um, be be authentic the work that comes out of it is just great for everybody you know and and these i just venture to say that as we see these young folks growing that um they're gonna they're gonna push this same kind of work behind them right man because it's moving and you see it with the young you see it with the older man sabri and Uh, l and um That crew of an ebony, you know, I, I just, I hope Bobby Jackson and them are watching this. I, man, they, they, they got a, they raised some incredible children, man. Them kids are, I mean, not yeah. kids, but these young people, they phenomenal. You know, they, they, this is like third generation of, of liberated minds for their family. You know, they go right. back, their grandmom and grandfather, you know, yeah. are, are, were revolutionaries. And so, They've been mm-hmm. free for a long time, and 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 it comes that comes through, and they're providing great leadership in the space, and so I think that's important as we move around that we have to mix the group, you know, yeah. in terms of having young people who are come out of a cultural community, as well as young people who don't, you know, right. because it's it's we got it they they're influencing each other. Um, yes. And, and but you, that, you, that collaboration you, is beautiful. You find it to be, and what I noticed is I watched, you find it to be contagious. Yeah. You know, as the as the as the more senior young folks lead and 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 they lead in the way that is um for their generation, right? It might be different than what we would have done, but it totally oh, yeah. makes sense to them. You know, and so they click in with one another and, and, and the fact that they could, you know, throw together like the, the We Need You song that they threw together in a relatively short period of time and it's so meaningful, it's amazing. Man. I keep using that word amazing, but. Um, and and let, let, me, let me tell you the impact that y'all have on these brothers, man. And, and thank you, Molly, for, for kind of bringing, bringing L and Sabri and those younger brothers that are leading into the into the conversation. Tell you how strong these brothers are, man. You're talking about third generation liberated minds and freedom fighters and such, man. L has mentored my sons. I ain't even nobody. This dude has gone down to FAMU, had lunch and dinner with Jordan, hanging out with him. Jordan didn't tell me nothing about it. Jordan's just soaking it in, man. Yeah. I mean, this was a while back. And then just by conversation, El and I were talking, and he told me about it. I was like, man, you that dude, man. You that dude. You okay. you and them brothers around you, y'all going y'all to change it, man. Y'all going to change it because yeah. you get it. You get it. You get that it, it's not just local. 
you get that you have to grab all the brothers. When you see a brother that has that inkling in his eye and you know you grab a hold of him and he's going to fight by your side, you get that brother. You don't yeah. let that brother go. And those brothers get that, man. And, yeah. uh, and you, you've, you've created a space for them, man, with, with this project, with this book, with Black Man Lab and, and, and Let Us Make Man and all the other great spaces, man, that, that this brotherhood collective has created. Man, they, they have seen we got their back. And so they're not afraid to jump up front. Kobe and Kahari ain't afraid to go down to CNN Center. They're yeah. not afraid. Why? Because you made them that way. We made them that way. Look, look, look who the uncle is. Marty. This, this, yeah. Marty, Marty has more people that he can go to to get on a panel and to lead a, lead a group and so forth than I, I've met in my whole life. And that's his uncle. Like, we have created space for these young brothers, man, to lead effectively. And I think as long, like you said, man, to just keep educating them, like, that is important because they got to know. They got to know what's about to happen. I saw it happen. I was down there. I said, we saw it happening. You know, we had 50 some odd years. We knew what was about to happen. I grabbed my kids. My students was with me. One of my sons was like, hey, let's um, – Go ahead and head that way. No, no, no. They just, yeah, I know what they just about to do. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and head that way. So I'm with you, man. That's why I wanted you to speak on it because I know I wasn't the only one. No, man. I wasn't the only one. Brother. We knew what was coming. And, and I, I want, man, you know, Brother Elias and, and, and little DK, they drive from Macon every weekend. Mm. And... And and Elias and DK is is Pee Wee Williams. Many of y'all fam humans, y'all know Pee Wee man. And yep. DK, I've been watching man. this kid just just go. You know, like like this. And Elias, um, our, our, our brother from the nation uh, of Islam and the musical director is just phenomenal. He's phenomenal. He's just brilliant. And we're over with my, my cousin, Kenya Tober. You know, the universe just has literally pulled so many energies. Ola Ramey is like, okay, look, I help with your grants. And then it was just boom, boom, boom. And things, mm. have, just, things have just lined up. And then, of course, the board is, is beautiful. The brothers are people that, you know, I trust y'all with my sons. And so I think it's when, and I think that's important that when we go on this journey, that it's not one where we're traveling alone and that right. we have a responsibility. My boy, Rick Jones writes the forward. This dude writes mm -hmm. the forward and Jaina is crying, reading it. I, I'm like, oh man, I don't even need to read this. I read it, I break down. Um, and that's my boy since you know, I was 18 years old, 17, 18 wow. at the Naval Academy, our first first year at the Academy, wow. you know, in the summer of uh, 1987. You know, I mm -hmm. had it read by Kedrick and Mari and Jared. And, you know, so it's been a, this is really a community book. You know, um, mm -hmm. people, people say they're self-made. Um, I never claim that I'm self-made. Anything that I am, we are community made. The um, say that have have created, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, and yeah. and then the thing that this is the last thing because I'm I feel like I'm doing shout outs, but I got, I really need to is uh, Antonio <laughs> Moses man with Ashanti Films. You know, I mean, think of it. The name of his film company is Ashanti Films, so he's dealing with the level of consciousness. He goes to our first, our very first Black Man Lab at the Russell Center. We do it on the sisters and dealing with um, sex trafficking. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Remember that? Remember that? Huge turnout. We even got criticized by some sisters because there were no sisters on the panel. But we were trying to make a point that part of this work have to be Black men stepping yeah. to and addressing sex trafficking. 
I hope some of the sisters understood that, some may not have, but at the end of the day, we were 250 deep with black men. And this yeah. brother was on the panel because he did a documentary about sex trafficking in Atlanta and he discussed it. We built a relationship out of that. And now he's teaching all of the young people, they're doing interviews at every um, session. They do interviews, they get in the backdrop. So it's a lot, it's, 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 it's a full experience. So young people who never picked up a camera, they call them a black magic, I think is the name of one of the cameras, never picked it up. His brother's got equipment that's worth $70,000, $80,000. Hmm. And they're, he's trusting them with it and they're moving responsibly with it. So it's, it's a yeah. lot, man. And I know we're out of time. I can do my habits, rituals, and disciplines and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, 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 we're going to stretch it a little bit because I just want to make sure that we, we touch on that as it relates to, um, you know, the project that we have going here, that we need your project, um, in that not only are these kids, and we keep using that term, I use it loosely, these young folks, not only are they um, putting out their work and, and getting really deep into the work um, you just touched on, as you talked about Brother Moses, these people that we have coming in to support are, I mean, top professionals at what they do. You know, Brother Moses, I, I was, it was interesting. You're right. He was doing the, we were doing those interviews and, Oh, it's all his equipment. And he got young folks doing the interviews. He just got out the way. He just got out the way. And then he can step in and give some pointers, get some things that you want to do, boom, boom, boom. These young folks would never get that. They would never get that. And that, that in itself is what the Black Man Lab has been all about. We want to give our young folks information that a lot of other communities just get, you know, through osmosis, really, because it's it's – it's, uh, you know, in the family or family friends. And, and in, go ahead. And in a, in a cultural context. Yeah. You know, people go to school all the time and they learn a craft. But do mm -hmm. they learn the craft to be in service of Black people and in yes. service of our liberation struggle and in service of, of changing and transforming the world? That's the beauty of Brother Moses. He's teaching in the context of capture our folk, you know, show what we do, who we're about. And yeah. so that changes the mindset. So we get out of the sense that this is, um, they call it, there was a book, was a book called Too Much School and Too Little Education. And, mm -hmm. and to educate, as my brother Keenan Walker talked about, is to draw out, to, to shed light, to, you know, that's the, that's the piece that I think, you know, we have to, we have to deal with and, I mean, think about it. we had Erin White. She's a boss lady in terms of business. Stacey Epps, incredible um, entertainment lawyer, you know, doing doing um, her piece. All of these, uh, Shannon McCullum, photographer, out out of this world, does mm -hmm. does does his piece and is gonna come over to the studio this weekend. So we had, um, you know, just so many different Brother Lies. A lot. Oh, yeah. Lies is the truth. It's the truth, man. Mm -hmm. So it's happening. It's happening. I'm grateful. Yeah. And I know that I believe deeply in what we're doing is aligned with the creator. And I'll, I'll say this, Joe. I grew up a black Catholic and my mother is still uh, a black Catholic. I, I did not of, know that. Three of us on this panel. All I, come out of, I come out of Our Lady Gate of Heaven Parish in Chicago's wow. Jeffrey right. Manor. So, wow. Um, it's it's, it's Saint, all Saint love. Albies Parish, you're right. That's right. Wow. I yeah, know that, both baby. went to Catholic high schools. Yeah, I went to De La I do Salle. believe that. They get all the good black athletes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, boy, my boys at De La Salle, D. Bolton, and our whole crew. But I, I, I'll just say that 
we know that there is a source of, of all life, all health and all power. There is a source. And that source is called by many, many names. Right. And, and worshiped and connected with in different ways. And um, it's, it has to be a liberating um, theology that we, we mm -hmm. engage. And so we have to, you know, wherever we find ourselves on our spiritual journey, we just finding how does, how does this relate to freeing us up, freeing up black people? Because if it's a true, it's addressing oppression. And mm -hmm. there's, you know, you can't leave oppression if you are trying to really be in line with, with the creator. And so yeah. I just know, I, I was saying all of that to say that I've watched things align. We got our first big grant yep. from um, Candida Fund with the assistance of Tanae Trailer, a sister that I met when I was in law school at Georgia State. And she's like, what projects are you working on? I said, we got one. <laughs> Finally, we got like, here's a project. And she was like, all right, here it is. We're going we gonna to bless you. And then I'm going to call around and try to help you get additional funding. And so it costs us about $1,000 a young person to do this, this project, about $1,000 a young person. And they, they get a stipend at the end. And so we're obviously encouraging people to donate to Black Man Lab, but we're, we're really reaching for those corporations and those big uh, foundations to to help us to help us do this so that you know we can focus our attention on the programming part of it and not and not spending too much more energy fundraising great raising raising the loop as it were you know yeah. um yeah. so so let's let's uh we're, we're over time here but i want to make sure that we we continue this conversation actually next week um, we're going to look to bring on uh, a few of our of our young uh, creators, innovators, and entrepreneurs. Um, I want them in the space because they need to see this too. They need to see that we are still we are still coalescing. We are still getting together to to do the work, um, and that that one project is not just it. And we want them to be seen. So um, next week we'll we'll make sure that we have a, a few of them on here. Uh, to get some more feedback on the book. Um, and, and with that, oh, let, what, what's that, brother? I want to, I want to, uh, I want to give my, my habits, rituals and disciplines, of man. Of course, man. Of course. And, and I want to shout out my boy, uh, Michael Bowens, man. Um, we, we've been doing this since for a long time. So, so Michael, Michael Bowens, little Michael and Brandon <laughs> in Rota, Spain. And we had a, a program called the Sankofa Cultural Enrichment Program in Spain that we were doing with them. And to see them, uh, their sister um, just turned, Alicia just turned 40 years old, like she was babysitting Kobe. So all I, all I say is to those, you know, who, who doubt what's possible is just lean in and believe in, in what's possible for us and our children will make us proud and they will take care of the business and and push us forward as a people so i just wanted to shout oh and this is his dad oh lord have mercy his his father is, is texting me man this is my boy from <laughs> was with voices um uh, voices of Blackness from Minnesota. What's uh, Sounds of Black? Yeah, yeah. Sounds, of Sounds, black. Of black. Sounds of Black. Sounds of Black. Uh -huh. So Mike, yeah, Mike Bourne Senior, man, that's my man. He and his wife been married for forever, and so they were one of our first models, um, Jane and I, in terms of uh, navigating. And uh, I love this brother, so I just wanted to uh, to shout shout them out, man, because we we building, you know, we built a little key lumbo in Rota. And, and everywhere we go, let's just try to keep building key lumbos where we can be, uh, our, our young people can be safe. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have a good discipline. 
All right. The ultimate goal is to have a key, the world be a key lumbo, right? That's right. So go ahead. What's, what's your habits, rituals, and disciplines, brother? So here's what I'm here's what I'm doing every day now. I'm doing um, get up. I'm doing medit very brief meditation, Joe. It's not long though, brother. That, right it's now, a start, brother. I know. I'm just starting. You know, people will laugh. I just put it on two minutes. I love it. Just try to clear my mind. Then I do affirmations. I use, yeah. um, I've been using the Black Man Lab affirmation. Okay. It's three minutes. So I'll play that and repeat it. Then okay. I'll do um, the visualization, just looking mm -hmm. at my day. You know, I visualize being here tonight. I visualize kind of going through the day. Mm -hmm. Then I, um, I read about for at least 10 minutes. And it depends, like I just read. Um, my sister, Lita Samanga, she's um, an author and good friend of ours and her husband, Mike Samanga, helped, uh, you know, with the publication of the book through Third World Press, by the way. I want to give it up for Brother Haki Matabuti, Mike Samanga, and the Third World Press family for inviting me in as an author. And then um, I read and then I write some of it down. And then I'm writing three, three kind of sections. I'm writing what I'm grateful for what I'm proud about and what I'm creating like in the day mm. it's really quick it's, you know, it's just like one page That's what's up. really quick stuff. Then I'm stretching and working out. So I'll go, uh, I'll walk outside and I wasn't doing this before Joe. I, I before I was just a strictly a treadmill dude, but um, Baba Wakesa was really encouraging us when the pandemic nice. started, get outside, get that. Yes. Surf. So I've done, I do one mile now, then I come inside, get on the treadmill and do four. That's, and, that's awful, uh, man. I and so that's, it. that's it, man. And, and it's, I feel my blood sugar coming back down. I got it, it gotten out of control. So now I'm okay. back under control. Awesome. But that's what, that's what I'm trying to do on a daily basis. And I feel myself getting stronger and, and staying healthy and, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I, I start with some gratitude to just start out. Honestly, when I get out of bed, I get on my knees and just yep. give some gratitude, <laughs> give thanks yep. that I woke up yes, and that we uh, we got a chance to do something um, more. So, I, I, well, brother, you're looking great. You're looking good. Your mind is clear. The clarity is amazing. I'm glad that these young brothers listen and the the seasoned brothers like myself get to hear you and your practices and, and your rituals and your disciplines, because whether it's what I'm doing or Marty's or anybody else, everybody has their own thing, but you got to have something. You got to be doing something. And clearly what you're doing is working for you, bro. Well, we got, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get like my boy D rice, man. Y'all see D rice, D rice is slim and trim. I told him he might be ready to go back and dunk a basketball. So I'm, uh -oh. I'm going to get out. Of the box. <laughs> I'm going to try to get out of 205. And uh, so I got some, some a way to go, but I'm going to keep working and, and doing this, this better eating situation as well. Okay. So, man, Love appreciate it. you, brothers, man. I, I'm, I'm excited about the young people next week coming yeah. on. Um, hopefully by then we'll have some, some mixed versions of, the, of some of the songs. So maybe we could play one or two just to, for our audience so they could hear some of that creativity. Yes. Yeah. Now, Deer has great this song, Black Dreams, you know. Absolutely. That's it's a crazy. Black Dreams are sacred is the is the chorus. He keeps singing. Black Dreams are sacred. And they are. Hey, real, yeah. real quick, I don't want to be too basic, but somebody on Facebook just asked a great question. How do they get the book? Oh, <laughs> go to, you can go to my website, right? Um, Mawali, M-A-W-U-L-I, MawaliDavis.com. Go to MawaliDavis.com and you can order the book. And if you put any, um, there's a place for you to, if you want it signed. We got, look, we got a stack of books that uh, Taylor's helping me getting them signed and getting them out. So we're going to sign the first couple hundred. And I'll tell you, um, one of my young people found a, a couple of uh, misspelling of some names. So I misspelled, I'm sorry, Stacey Abrams, my falsus. I misspelled your last name <laughs> repeatedly for whatever reason, I don't know. And uh, rest in peace, Brianna Taylor, I misspelled. So I'm just putting it out there. 
the second run, that is going to be completely, completely resolved. But that very last chapter called Lessons um, is one that talks about everything that happened at the Capitol. And so I was scrambling to finish it and okay. did not proof it three or four times like we did the rest of the book. So, so my Good fault. Good stuff. No sweat. We, we'll, we'll, we'll give you some forgiveness on that. Uh, since the content of the book is as good as it is, brother. Um, also, just if if anybody's listening in, if you look on um, YouTube and and uh, Facebook, we have this, the um, the website there as well. If you want to um, click on it in there. So um, with that, man, great discussion uh, again, brother. Super proud of you. Uh, I, I know how this. Um, this endeavor has come together and uh, that it's finally here and, and, and done in full. I'm really proud of you, man. And uh, I think this is the first of me as, as we've discussed before. The next um, one is going to yeah. be on sisters, man. Cause this is really, and we acknowledge is, is pretty male centered, but the next one, um, I just want to talk about, some of the sisters and I, I might be it might be interviews with some some real phenomenal sisters who have really impacted my thinking and and um and work so um y'all get ready and tiffany williams roberts and anana harris paris and sarah mm. barnhill i'm gonna interview y'all <laughs> i love it of course, it's Mama tough. Etta and Jana Johnson. Davis. I was gonna say, don't don't leave out Mama Etta, Jana Johnson. No, nah, no, nah, yeah. nah, man. I I just I I am very grateful for Jana's support, and this has been, you know, um, an experience. The whole mm -hmm. thing has been an experience, and we've she sacrificed a lot. Or I heard somebody say it differently: that you don't sacrifice, you just are committed. Mm -hmm. she's, been very, she's been very committed. Haki Matabuchi says that in an interview with Lita Samanga. And, and sometimes, sometimes as we do this work, some people think you should be committed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fact. yeah, that's for Never sure. Fact. You know? and, uh, hey. Thank y'all, man. Yeah, well, wait, wait, wait. We got to still, although we gotta it's just close out right, here, bro. I think we still... We got to close out properly, man. Yeah, uh -oh. so I, I talk about Mama and Jiri in the book. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Mama, Mama and Jiri from in Cobra, love her, the whole Afghani family. And she would have us close out and say, I am a link in the chain. I am a link. I am a link in, in the chain. chain. And it won't break here. And it won't break and here. And it won't break here. I am a link in this chain. I am a link, am a link in, this, in chain. this chain. And it won't break here. And it won't, and it break, won't here. break here. We are links in this chain. We, we are links, in, are this links chain. in this chain. And we won't break here. We won't, and break, we won't here. break here. I say, I say, I say brother, brothers, appreciate you all. Ali, again, thank you, brother, for the work. Joe, thanks for being here. With me tonight and uh we will keep pushing and look forward to next week when we'll get some of these powerful young folks on man and I, i'll try not to get too emotional about you know we we, we get to get emotional <laughs> oh bro them kids that had you crying man right right you know i wrote a i wrote a poem years ago it was really you know black men ain't supposed to cry but hmm. you know, they had you crying brother yeah let's and, get them on here and, all and right fam Peace as, L said, as L said, uh, when he was filming, he's like, if this doesn't get you emotional, something's wrong with you. Right. <laughs> yes, so sir. Good stuff. All right, y'all. Right, Thanks, man. Love y'all. Love you, too. Love you, brothers.